now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Non Watch Review, part of Non Talk Network. On this show, we reviewed the latest film drop or throwback celebrating a milestone while eating and drinking our favorite movies and snacks and drinks. I'm your host, Alejandro. Today, I am eating some Taco Bell, some Dr. Pepper. I already got some started on my tacos here. I'm like really impatient. So forgive me, guys. I'm just like mm, munching, munching, munching. I don't want tacos. <laughs> tacos are delicious. I love them. Um, on that note, I want to introduce my amazing guest here. First of all, here is Lonnie. Hi, everybody. Glad hey. to be here. I am uh, I am drinking just a, a Jack and Coke in my wonderful pinhead tiki cup right here. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a metal straw because I'm bougie. I have to ask, what kind of drink did you make? It is a, just a Jack and Coke. Oh, you said Jack and Coke. I'm sorry. It's right. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was so distracted by the awesome tiki cup. I forgot about the drink. <laughs> and then uh, my snacks today, because uh, I'm on I'm on a, a keto diet right now, Ooh. are these uh, wonderful chocolate chip cookies by Keto Candy Girl. If you've ever if ever had Keto Candy Girl before, chocolate they're uh, chip one, cookies that are keto. They're one gram of carb per cookie, and they're delicious. Dude, that sounds amazing. I could eat this whole thing by myself, but that wouldn't help me on my diet at all. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, that's amazing drink, delicious cookies, and an also amazing company. I want to uh, also introduce our second amazing guest, Yaya. Hi. Oh my God. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am eating um, gung. Uh, gung is Vietnamese uh, spring roll. So really excited. I know it's uh, bon nu. Bon nu is uh, beef. So yeah. <laughs> And I am um, drinking iced tea. Awesome. Oh my God, that uh, sounds delicious. Uh, wh what's inside the sprinkle? You say, uh, what, uh, all in there if you don't mind. So, uh, bondung, bondung uh -huh. is uh, grilled beef. So, uh -huh. uh, so yes, um, we speak Vietnamese at home too. Um, okay. uh, there's also, um, uh, well, instead of usually we use uh, vermicelli, but we're lazy. So we're using ban hoi. Ban hoi are like basically vermicelli sheets. And that's my favorite. There mm -hmm. is uh, bean sprouts in here. And there is just some like uh, romaine lettuce. Oh, that sounds mm. delicious. Oh, my that God. So my good. mouth is watering. I'm like generic taco <laughs> some that just like insufficient. <laughs> I'm a oh obsessed God, with so Vietnamese good. food too because we have it like like everywhere around by where I work are good like What's Vietnamese your favorite? restaurants. What's your favorite oh, dish? God. Um, the oh, I don't even know if I can say it right. It's just the 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 kham ga na. Uh, so it's like chicken rice. Yeah, yeah, chicken and rice. Yeah, like just barbecue chicken and rice basically. Love that. Yes, mine is ban hoi tik nung, which is uh, ban hoi the vermicelli sheets with uh, uh, grilled barbecue pork. Mm. Oh my goodness! Oh, my mom used to get a lot of like these, uh, and I know this is a very very hybrid dish. The community a lot of like lemongrass sandwiches and so forth as well. But I like it's uh Lord, I this just the smell of just the beef and the way it's cooked mm -hmm. and the vegetables. Oh my! I'm not watering. Oh my Lord! Okay, it's, it's the lemongrass. <laughs> lemongrass is the. Ah. Oh, I get all excited I'm, about food. Oh my lord! I'm, okay, wait. I'm okay. breaking my keto just oh, thinking. About oh, this. She's okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Hellraiser 1987. Hellraiser 1987. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and you know what? I'm probably gonna have to watch. That. Well, you know what? I don't think I really want to watch Hellraiser by eating a lemongrass sandwich. But still, regardless, amazing sounding food. Um, but we're gonna start off today. Uh, if we haven't said it, our friends, family, and amazing guest gentlemen here. Uh, let's say hello to. I believe it's. Uh, Teeny Faba, I believe. Please get me wrong if I messed your name. I apologize. Q Ball as well. Um, he says, oh, 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 yay. Q says, I'm eating chili with crackers and black forest ham sandwich with a Kroger version of Mountain Dew. Oh, my Lord. Oh, and I want to thank you, Yaya, for Mindu. hanging with me on my birthday last week. He's looking beautiful as ever. Uh, you, <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Q's amazing. We love to mm -hmm. love to have you, my friend. Uh, well, you guys, once again, we are talking about Hellraiser 1987. Uh, having delicious food and amazing guests talking about it today. Um, just to start off with, I want to talk about our ratings for the film in general. Uh, I'd like to start off with you, Lonnie. Uh, out of five popcorn buckets, what did you uh, give this a rating? This one's this one's absolutely a five for me. It's uh, it's top ten, top tier horror for me. Uh, there's there's a, obviously we'll talk about it, but there's a bunch of reasons uh, why I have a big appreciation for this, and uh, everything from the 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 makeup effects, uh, the score, 
um, uh, some of the directing choices and everything for it. I really like, I really like this movie a lot. Heck yeah. Five out of five. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Out of the five popcorn buckets, where would you give this rating at? I'm on the opposite spectrum. I gave okay. it one and a half out of five. Ooh, okay. uh-huh. um, I think for me, uh, I think the disadvantage for me was that I watched this movie uh, when I was a lot older. Um, uh-huh. So I think for me, it got too hyped up as a horror movie. And when I watched it for the first time, I was actually very sorely disappointed um, <laughs> with what I usually watch. Like I love slashers. And then for me, I was just kind of like, Huh. So yeah, unfortunately for me, this was a 1.5 out of five. Okay, okay. Well, I'm a little excited about this because one, we have a five out of five, right? We have a 1.5 out of five, and I'm going to hit it with a 3.5 out of five. I think this is just a well-rounded opinion from three of us right now. So I'd love to see uh, where we uh, come from on this. So I'm super excited about this. Uh, in that regard, I want to hop back into the comments really quick here. Uh, response being Tin Elf Abba, but you can call me Tin. Yes, I will call you Tin. Thank you for helping me not butcher that name. I apologize, but thank you for joining us nonetheless. Uh, so I want to go and start off with Yaya. In regards to your introduction to the film, you did mention uh, that you saw this film uh, as an adult. Uh, mm-hmm. Please uh, tell your initial feelings about the film and how you were introduced to it. Okay, so um, when I was younger, I did not like horror movies as much as I love them now. And my favorite types of horror movies are slashers. So I've always been like, you know, Pinhead has always been like, as one of like, you know, the the slasher like villains, like, you know, the monsters, he's like an iconic monster. So um, I was just going through like, you know, oh, okay. Um, trying to catch up on all like the iconic horror, like, you know, or like um, cult favorites and that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, when I finally got to Hellraiser, I was like, I was excited because I love Pinhead's design. Like, I love like the idea, like, you know, the grids, the pins, and like the open chest and everything. Such a, I do have to admit, such an amazing, amazing character design. And that's the thing about this movie that I love the most is the character de- uh, designs for the Cenobites. Um, watched it expecting like you know like you know I was expecting something kind of like you know Texas Chainsaw Horror Mass uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre oh my god why did I put horror in there (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, like that's one of my favorites I and I'm one of those people I actually do love the remakes of all the iconic um, horror movies so I I was expecting something like you know something that really catches my attention something that really thing but when I watched it I was like this is not what I expected. And I think I did get overhyped for like the iconic monster kind of thing. So when I watched it, I was expecting like, yeah, super gory jump scares and that kind of stuff. I ended up getting like a weird, like ro- like romance relation, a, a taboo, like romance relation. And it seems like, you know, Uncle Frank had something for his nephew as well. And I was a little bit like, hmm, did not expect the yeah, spicy Frank. scenes. Yeah, Frank. Frank. <laughs> Did not expect as much of the spicy naughty, scenes. Naughty, naughty Frank. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> naughty. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately, um, when I watched it and I was just like, and I also, I guess, I, it was a movie of its time as well. And it's because I watched mm. it, like, you know, in like the later 2000s. No, of course. I got it, you. It wasn't yeah. as for me so unfortunately I would just was really underwhelmed by it and the pacing as well for me like pacing is very important especially in a horror movie horror movie um so that that's for me as well it didn't really like keep my attention the whole time I was just yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I don't we get that we get that all right my, my uh, so feelings little aren't hurt. Sense fine. Then. <laughs> now okay now coming from a perspective of you just seeing it now we we see that you've okay now seen it in the 2000s compared to when it came out in 1987 so we have uh technically clive barker's first introduction uh once again excellent opinion there's nothing wrong with that i want to shoot over to lonnie over here my friend uh in regards to you in first introduction of film your vibe with it how you felt about it uh go right ahead my friend um my my first introduction to this movie was in in 1988 Mm-hmm. Um, my mom had taken me and my two siblings to go see the little mermaid at the drive-in. Mm-hmm. Um, if you grew up going to drive-ins, you know, that there are multiple screens at drive-ins, <laughs> see multiple movies, uh, behind us, they were doing a double feature of Hellraiser one and Hellraiser two. And I had no interest in seeing the little mermaid whatsoever. <laughs> I turned around and I saw this. I saw Pinhead for the first time and went, this is dope. This is dope. 
I <laughs> couldn't even hear the movie. Like I couldn't hear any of the audio. I was just watching the visuals, just entranced as an eight-year-old kid. I have to just ask like, you. You said you were watching amazing. The Little Mermaid. Why? Well, I was supposed to be watching The Little Mermaid. So you had the soundtrack of The Little Mermaid in the back as you oh, saw yes. head. That dude, yes. I I bow. Oh my lord! Yes, that is. Yes, that sounds like an amazing experience. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just had to make that sure that was there. Please go on. I, I apologize. Yes. Now I I can't even get hard now without uh, listening to the Little Mermaid soundtrack and watching Hellraiser. So it's informed my entire life. I think. Someone needs therapy. Oh, I love it. Oh my god! Yes, you became one of my favorite persons in the world. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, never look at Little Mermaid. It doesn't, Mermaid help, it doesn't help the that same I live again. right down the street from Magic from <laughs> Disneyland too, so that just makes it even worse sometimes. Oh my god! I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just like continuing on from there, uh, I had I had a best friend around at the, at that time who was uh-huh. really into comics, and. Um, Really, like, his mom always let him watch whatever horror movie he ever wanted. So, you know, we do, like, the sleepovers and stuff like that. And he had uh, the original run of Epic Comics Hellraiser comic right series. Um, so I got to read those. So I got, like, before I had even really watched the movie fully for, for the whole time, I had background. I had story. I, I knew who these characters were before I even went into it. And it just informed and grew into this fandom that I still hold on to, you know, 30 some odd years later. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That, that's awesome, man. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, too. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. That was fantastic. Um, a little uh, mixture of both of your worlds being introduced to the film. Uh, I've been a big horror fan uh, just in general. Uh, so uh, my introduction was like zombie films. I've mentioned it plenty of times here in regards to zombie or some kind of like mass kind of disease. And it moved over to Friday the 13th and moved a little bit to Halloween, a little bit back and forth to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Interesting thing about this film is that I heard about Freddy Krueger. I heard about Jason Voorhees. I heard about The Exorcist. I've heard about everyone instead of Pinhead. I don't know why Pinhead was brought to like briefly mentioned to me here and there, but I was always enthralled with either Friday the 13th or Halloween. Uh, you know, my major fear was Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers, just because that's exactly who I was, you know, introduced to the silent baddies and so forth. Um, so I was watching a, I believe it was a documentary. I think it was like a 10 year anniversary of it. And they were talking about how um, introducing all these heavy slashers and like they were called the Kings of Horror. And they were talking about Freddy, Freddy Cougar. And they were talking about Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers and um, uh, Leatherface. And the big argument was why no one brought in Pinhead. And I was like, who's Pinhead? What the hell is this? I, I want to know. So I, I started, you know, I decided, I believe I was 20, at the time being I was 29. Um, I had a, I had a Big Mac with me, large fry and a Coke. And I put this film on and I could not finish my damn sandwich, dude. I tried. <laughs> I couldn't even get through like, the first 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I was like, I, was like uh, uh, no, I can't do this, man. What the heck? Yeah. And it was one of those things where my jaw just dropped because I was seeing all these practical effects that almost reminded me of, um, uh, is it uh, not it, the thing, the thing in a sense mm-hmm. with like in the very beginning and so forth with, you know, just the, you know, the, the animatronics and stuff or not the, anim- I guess you'd be the prosthetics, the, the practical effects. Um, so that just stuck with me with wanting to vomit and, <laughs> and seeing like how detailed the beginning of the film is. Um, that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and start off, let's say, in the beginning of the film. Uh, we go ahead and there is no, there is no, uh, you know, walking on eggshells in this film. It hits you like a Mack truck right in the front end. Mm-hmm. Initially, you're looking mm-hmm. at blood and gore. You have the hints of the actual cube itself, um, which I think it's Frank, right? That's initially mm-hmm. the beginning that's there. Yeah. You know, having his little seance and so forth as well. Buying it from the vagrant. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which that I, you know, thank you for actually bringing that up. Cause I think I glanced away for a moment when I looked up there and I was like, why does Vagrant keep on making appearances? And like I get him who he was, but you, you can miss that in the very beginning initially too, yeah. as well. Um, but that being said, we are in the beginning of the film. We obviously know that this world is somehow we know of a world, possibly through a cube. Cause, uh, like hints of it, uh, Frank is the first introduction of the film. And then we go right into his brother, Larry and his, <clears throat> <laughs> saucy wife um so they get into this place now and here they are obviously i believe it's a family home 
Uh, he makes, I think Larry ref makes the references to the fact that the old the old woman kicked the bucket, which I'm assuming is means the mother. Um, yeah. And he was okay with everything coming out of the house in general. Uh, Lonnie, I want to start with you, my friend. In the first, let's say, I'd say a good 15 minutes of the film itself. And, oh, hold on one second here. Before I go into this here, I wanted to, oh, why did I do that? Excuse me here. Okay, I thought I lost the comments here. I almost had a semi-panic attack. I apologize. I want to scroll up these comments here because we do have some comments here. So Q, I uh, wanted to mention, say, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And I hope you can ask me about any musical history and knowledge because I'm a musician and music history nerd. Okay. Also, yes. <laughs> aw, we love Q. Um, he says it's a five out of five for me because it's just one of those things to where an uh, interesting character with story attached to it. I love how scary Pinhead was. It was the first of its kind that really involved with religion. The box itself was insane. Very true. Uh, Tin <clears throat> says that is the best um, uh, memory ever. Q mentions, Alex, you can use my inhaler. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I will definitely remember that for future <laughs> laugh things. Oh, my God, Lonnie, I'm eyeing that dang cube. And I'm also eyeing those freaking spring rolls you're eating, Yaya. Um, <laughs> absolutely, Tin says, uh, mentioned with Q-Ball, I'm absolutely uh, with you. As a musician as well, this is one of my most favorite horror soundtracks. And the creatures, uh, I'm assuming the mask, I'm assuming, and the cubes are some of my most favorite uh, images in general. I have to agree with you guys. Just the visuals of, in, in mm -hmm. general of this are amazing. Uh, before I forget here, sidetrack wise, Lonnie, like I said before, we're from the first 20 minutes of the film. We get introduced to the family members. We have an idea that this eerie world, what is your opinion of the introduction, the pacing, the vibe of the film in the beginning? Oh, I mean, uh, just the, the first 10 to 15 minutes, like it's, it's very much an introduction like Clive Barker does. If you're familiar with Clive Barker's writings or anything else that he's ever done, he's, he does he does very well with introducing characters and kind of slowly giving them just a little bit of of character, of an idea of who they are. Uh, this, I mean, you get introduced to to Frank, the original fuck boy. He's just <laughs> he's yeah. just the worst, you know. And you can just even tell from the beginning, it's just slimy. He's in this slimy place with dirty people slamming down a dirty wad of hundreds on the table, yeah. you know, it, yeah. the dirty fingernails and everything with sliding the box across the table. There's like cockroaches and stuff all over the place. <laughs> like it just it immediately gives that vibe of the grossness, the, um, the lengths that Frank will go to, to get what he wants, which is very important to the story uh and then you get you you get to meet uh, uh larry who's just he's dad you know he's just yeah. he's a goofball he's got he's got dad jokes you know he's he he he, he knows what he wants but he's also kind of subjugated to his wife julia yeah. uh julia i think is just like the stepmom you know, she's like <laughs> this Disney evil stepmom. Like she's just like she's pretty. She stands very tall. She's got that British accent. Um, very and appealing. just immediately she's got a scowl. She just hates everything. She doesn't want to be here. She doesn't want to be in the house. Uh, she wants she wants something more. You know, it's not really explained so much, but like you kind of get the idea. Larry might be a little more affluent, and she thinks, "Oh, why are we slumming it in this old house where your mom died?" You know. I don't even want to be here. Like yeah. I'm better than this. Like you get that immediately. So immediately, like just in that first 15 minutes, you get that, uh, you get that idea of who these characters are. For and sure. then eventually, like later on, you, you, uh, you give me, give me Christy, um, Chris and, uh, the, the cottons that's, that's their name. Yeah. Christy cotton. And, and that's right. <laughs> they love um, their dinner. <clears throat> and Chris Christie's off at college. So you get that she's, you know, she's just this young, you know, impressionable cutie, you know, still got a crush on her to this day. <laughs> Ash Ashley Lord, Ashley Lawrence is a beautiful woman. And one of the, one of the kindest people I think I've ever met at a, a con. I mean, Doug Bad Bradley. Final girl. Thing. She is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. De definitely top tier, top tier final girl. I mean, she's been in so many horror films. Like she, she embraced horror. Like she even does like visual media. She like does paintings and art and stuff. That's all kind of like horror related and stuff. It's, it's gorgeous. That's very cool. That's very cool. Now on that same note, on the introduction to the first 15 minutes film coming from a perspective on a different perspective, Yaya yourself in regards to the pacing in your opinion, uh, going into the introduction of the family members to just, you know, Frank in general, the vibe of self, uh, the vibe itself. What is your first uh, opinion on the pacing, the beginning, the vibe of it, what you see so far? Because I do know there's some blood and gore, of course, obviously, mm -hmm. with some of the special effects. 
So um, I agree. Like the beginning, I found it. I actually really liked the beginning because it was such a great introduction to the characters because like, you know, as I said, well, like Frank, like, you know, he's like sitting there and he's just like sweating over this cube. And I'm like, dude, it's just candles. You need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, it's not that hot. And then I'm, I don't know how, what you were doing before you touched that cube, but I'm like, I don't know why you were sweating that much. Just gonna say that. <laughs> um, but agree like you know once um beginning um after oh, i love that scene where like um uh deep throat the cenobite yeah. uh, the fema cenobite um she's like walking around picking up pieces and then like she pieces his face together mm. I, oh, love I love that, scene. that visual was amazing mm. it was just like you know you pick it over and suddenly like, you hear was it like the ta -ta 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 sound and you see the eyeball and she places it with all the other pieces and i was like yes and then you instantly uh, go to like the door opening in the house and i was and then of course julia and i was like dang <laughs> She's as, a, as an interjection real quick one yes. of the, the the interesting things is they had a really low budget for this film and mm. one of the things that originally they wanted to do was those pieces of the face were supposed to move oh. so like the eye was supposed to blink and like the mouth was supposed to do like but they didn't have the budget to do that but oh, it was still that, cool though. to look at yeah. nonetheless but yeah it was it was it was something they wanted more it was like that uh, that jim henson idea of mm. like i know i can do this but do we have the budget to do this <laughs> nice i can see that i can see that um, but yeah, like instantly, like, okay, so my first impression of Larry thought I was looking at him, I'm gonna be really mean, but right off his like face, I was like, he looks more like the bad guy. <laughs> he looks more <laughs> like a villain. Like, you know, you know what I mean? I'm I'm not gonna I'm I swear I'm not being mean, but no, like no, no, his no. face which, in general. Which is funny though, because technically mm -hmm. speaking, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, so, once, like, once you get to the end, he plays it so well. He does. Well, also, because also too though, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but also too, Andrew Robinson, the actor that plays Larry, one of his biggest roles was playing the opposite villain to uh, Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry. So that's how I was introduced to him in general. So when I saw him as a good guy coming in here at first, I was confused because I seen him as a bad guy before. <laughs> yeah. So that confused the heck out of me, but please continue, I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Like, um, other than his face, other than that, I was like, yeah, he's actually such a great character. Like, you know, he's trying to be accommodating to his wife. He's trying to like do his best. And then you see Julia. And then you yeah. see Julia. <laughs> Yeah. And then like she just has this like constipated like look on her face the moment she walks in and yeah. she's just like eh. and okay correct me, uh if me if I'm wrong like isn't like the original franchise she's supposed to be actually the big the big bad. That's why the second film she's so Yeah, I, I was about to say it's kind of funny you should say that because <laughs> there's I, I'll I'll go but yeah, you go, I'll, I'll go into a long point a little later cuz yes, 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 you I'll, are we'll, we'll talk there's... about this later if we remember. <laughs> 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 if I remember, but like yeah, so you're supposed to hate her. But I think she did it too well. <laughs> she did it too well. And I was like, girl, it's oh, like. Claire, Claire yeah. Higgins has that look. She's she's yeah. just always had that look and it's great. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I was like, whatever. I was like, fine. And then like you get to the scenes, like she's walking around and then like she's and then she's like, Larry, I'm just like there's squatters in the house. And I'm like, well, you don't see anyone around here now, do you? Just, just calm, <laughs> calm down. So yeah, like I think these, I think the beginning was such a great um, introduction to the characters. You don't, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't see the Cenobites originally with like when um, you only see Deep Throat, and that was such yeah. like a good hint to mm -hmm. what the Cenobites are and what the heck is gonna like. What is she? What are they? And it's such a good little teaser to that. And then like yeah, as I said, it, I think the beginning is an excellent introduction to the characters. Right on, right on. You know, it's, it's interesting. Both of you have mentioned points here and there about this. Like, um, I, I kind of like, after getting a refresher on the, uh, uh, of Hellraiser, I was kind of like, all right, look, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to focus this a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> let me go ahead and like, I want to focus on certain things that might, I might have missed. Um, so basically in the beginning, you guys know the uh, couch movers and everything, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the house movers. Yes. Funny fact, and kind of a shitty fact for the actor himself. Um, the younger one that was moving the couch, that asked for the beer. Evidently, he was offered the role of Pinhead mm -hmm. or the mover. And he chose to take the mover because he figured that he didn't want to be associated with prosthetics and not his face to be viewable. So he decided to be the moving guy. And now Pinhead being so iconic the way he is, um, the interesting thing is he was never assigned that many lines in the beginning nor in the end. He actually took lines from Deep Throat, uh, Butterball, 
uh, the chatter. There's a lot of things that have been, you know, ironically right place, right time. That's made Pinhead so iconic. Uh, but right. on that note of both of uh, both Lonnie and Yaha, you guys mentioned because they only show little certain parts. Lonnie, you mentioned in the beginning uh, that they had a small budget. Uh, they had exactly something around a little bit under one million pounds, which is a little bit at the time being equivalent to one million dollars because of the mm -hmm. the uh, the money and translations over over time and time and effort. So I guess they were a little bit more closer to the American dollar at the time being. So yeah, it was uh, Roger Corman's company. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah. And uh, and they gave them like yeah, basically like nine hundred grand. Yep, is what they had. Yep. And it was it was it was crazy because they took that budget right there and um, which we'll mention I can't mention right now. So technically speaking, I don't know if you guys well, I'm sure, of course, you guys mentioned you obviously paying attention, uh, but the actual FX and budget toward the end of the film got really down to meat and potatoes, which is only like <sighs> some costumes with fake blood and stuff. And they had to eliminate a lot of the special effects that they had because they just didn't have money. So evidently they spent the last week doing hand drawn special effects over that stuff him mm. and he calls him the oh, french like the squiggly guy. lines and stuff yeah all like yeah that. and he, he calls him the french guy it was just a it, this guy that was with him on set they spent two weeks just just doing that stuff which is which is yeah. fascinating but um yeah I, I would say the introduction was uh surprising to me um once again it went right into it the pacing was fast um I'll be honest with you. The only reason why I was hyped to see this movie at first was because of Andrew Robinson himself. Uh, to me, he was the most famous actor at the time being. At the time being, for me, I saw this film in my uh, late, my early 20s. So it was one of those things where, I'm sorry, late 20s, 29 or so. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is this is interesting trying to catch up on it. So in regards to the pacing, I thought it was extremely fast and so forth as well. Uh, the special effects um, were, you know, honestly, I, I say, you know, practical effects were... I still cringe. Like, yeah, that was just a line of blood that he died on on that nail. But every time I see that, I cannot. It gets me. You see the perfect build up, his hand being rocked up there and stuff like that. That and is, it's ah. good. It's the good thick blood too. It wasn't yeah. that like that runny red that stains your hand. Like it was the good thick stuff. You know? Yeah, it wasn't it? Wasn't yeah. like candy red? It was dark, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a theme through the whole movie. Uh, uh -huh. When I was watching it, uh, I was watching it at lunch today. Um, when I was watching <laughs> it, with my coworkers were asking me what it was because they're they're normies. They don't really know a whole <laughs> lot about the stuff, um, and they're asking me about it. And one of the Kind of the the themes along with the uh, the special effects in this is it's a goopy movie. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. all the special right. effects are goopy. The blood is goopy. Uh, later on, when Frank is uh, transforming, he's just like Frank dripping with that like yeah, he's like dripping with that saliva looking goop that's on uh -huh. him before he gets like the muscle and the blood. Yeah, uh, just like everything is really gross. A hundred freaking percent. Yeah. Yeah, oh but, it looks, but it but it gives that like level on his of, bones and everything too. Yeah, that, uh, it that, gives that yeah. it gives that level of like shock and realism. I think to it is just like it's it's gross. It's just not like a guy in a suit that's covered in blood. It's they went into like anatomic detail on oh, yeah. a lot of stuff, and it was and it, it added a little bit to 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 I think the the, the grossness of it. Same with like the Cenobites, like they had the weird anatomicalness of the of the grotesque that they do mm -hmm. like there's an anatomicalness to it no, there's yeah. little, I'll, I'll talk about it later when we when we when we get no, to no, that no part. no no you're, you're perfectly there's, fine there's little there's little details in each one of them that i think is is really cool that uh, having multiple watches like myself you you notice like the little details mm -hmm. and, and no, 100 yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting with, with both you're looking at uh like the chatter or you're looking at butterball uh, it's kind of yeah. depressing, though, because essentially, um, technically speaking, Butterball is supposed to be the head Cenobite uh, in the actual book mm -hmm. itself. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, with the crazy prosthetics, like I, I still freak out when Butterball licks his lips when he's just yeah. and I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, interesting thing about, though, the female Cenobite, hypothetically speaking, was given more lines, right? Um, mm -hmm. Also, she wasn't given the name Deep Throat until it was a teasing teaser throughout the cast. And eventually they actually emphasized that they, they wanted to make some clarity because even though the name was Deep Throat and it was sexually connotized, and, you know, it, just to actually give it that vibe, it was also called Deep Throat in a, in a sense to give the female Cenobite um, a emphasis of exposing a weakness but showing it's badass for women not <clears throat> having a voice. So hypothetically speaking, she was supposed to express the pain and, and, and the grotesqueness of that, um, right. which I believe... Um, but Lonnie and Yaya, you both mentioned that this is one of the first horror films that actually 
obsessively use other than the exorcist um more religious uh incense in regards to the direction of um the expression and just the storyline in general uh, in yeah. fact i think in this particular portion we are now probably about 45 minutes to the film we understand that right now uh claire higgins julia has some little lusting issues over frank right uh interesting thing about frank by the way is that his whole character is actually dubbed over the whole film. So that's not his voice, which I was totally surprised I didn't learn about that. The, um, the reason for the reason for that was the studio. The studio yep. wanted it to be based in uh, the US. United States, um, yeah. Instead of, it was originally just, it was uh, Clyde Barker being from England and also had the story based in England. And most of the actors are British actors. Yes. Uh, besides, yep. besides Ashley Lawrence, I think. Yeah. And yeah. uh, so it like he made the aesthetic very English, but sure. then the studio comes in and goes, oh, we want to make it uh, based in America so we can draw the American audience into that. So they had to dub over most most everybody. They had to dub over uh, with American accents. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a, yeah. I remember it was crazy just to think, you know, what what measures they had to go do to do this. And in regard with it being released, you know, kind of it's interesting because now at this point in the film we're at right now, we obviously see Butterball. We have the Chatterer. We have just all the Cenobites in general. Uh, Pinhead seems to be established at this point as the lead bad baddie uh, boss in mm-hmm. general. Um, we see that there's that lust relationship between uh, obviously Julia and Frank that we mentioned before. Um, now, in that iconic cringe-like cut your hand off the uh, nail concept, him bleeding into that upper room, which which <laughs> that room is just... Uh, He's in this room, bleeds, and makes an indication that he found a way to escape the Cenobites, right? Kind of, this is being indicated here. Um, now, I'm going to actually go over to you on this here, Yaya. Now we have experienced, we've seen uh, hints of practical effects, the bones, gore, blood, muscle. We've seen the fact that there is a family, but this family seems to have a nasty secret. And mm-hmm. how it's implied here, what's going on. Um in regards to the tone of the film, in regards to, uh, let's say, in regards to the storyline, uh, let's go on to continue. What's your vibe of the story? Is it still holding its its pace? Is it still holding your attention at this point? And also, too, let's also add in, I want to go ahead and, and um, throw in your opinion about the acting as well, too. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, by this point, I think for me, it kind of slowed down because it uh-huh. just starts to, like, you know, go into more Julia's, like, conflict of gotcha. like and you can tell like she does not love her husband or she's like she just seems so annoyed with him the whole time and i'm just like girl get a divorce <laughs> if you're gonna be like that i'm sorry i'm that type of person i'm like you you if you can't stand the sight of your husband it's time to leave girl <laughs> she's just mad she couldn't lock frank down that's that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> exactly <laughs> like yeah like you know when they're naked she's like touching him and then she, he leaves she's like no i'll do anything anything and i'm like Girl. Just as a just as a funny, which we, we can't pull the scene up right now or whatever. But one of my favorite hilarious parts of this movie is when they're like they're they're, they're like he's like right in her face and he's like seducing her and like touching her hand and stuff. Yeah. When he goes to go kiss her that first time, he latches onto her chin. Shit. He doesn't even yes. kiss her mouth. It's like he full just- mouth on her chin it is hilarious i noticed that today because i watched it right before just to get a like a refresher as well and i saw that he just like attacks it just takes a bite yeah right he out just of right goes here. for the chin like no lips no like sensuality he's like full open mouth yes he's like he chomps down i'm like yeah. okay this is not a cannibal movie i'm sorry <laughs> um, but yeah no okay so it gets a little okay for me i guess again i'm gonna be a little bit more no, I'm not. I'm trying to be a little bit more lenient because this is a movie from the 80s. Um, it was a little much. Like some of the expressions, like, you know, with Frank coming in and he's holding his hand like, oh, and I get it. I get it. You're scared of blood. I get it. But it's in he's like, Lonnie mentioned the goop. The goop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's a little much for me. And um, it is for me, like, as I said, I love slashers. I don't mind gore. But for, I don't know, for some reason, like, it was a little not too much like it made me squeamish it was too much that it actually drew me away from the film for some okay. reason um okay. uh i thought that it was a little like they did it for the sake of doing it, which is fine but it just wasn't my cup of tea um but anyways but yeah uh what was it talking about but yeah like oh, movie. No, get in- <laughs> go on sorry go on sorry yeah no worries i lose my train of thought it's still brain fog um <laughs> okay 
<laughs> so uh so yeah so like this part it starts a lull because it's mostly like julia's conflict it's like oh like i i like want frank but he's gone and he didn't take me with him kind of idea like she gets when she opens like the photos and she gets so angry and then oh she yeah the like yeah she face. tears the one with the other girl in it yeah yeah, yeah his was... many uh his many expatades expatades uh, expatades yeah. he had it. like a whole suitcase yeah, full you. of pictures of women yeah. and stuff like right next to that dirty ass bed that he had in there <laughs> exactly so for me which is more like okay girl we get it you're thirsty but yeah. it's like this part is like for me I was kind of like okay I get it I get it I understand like in a way it was more just trying to justify what she does later on but it was just mm. so slow and then like you know she just always again that constipated face is like uh, okay <laughs> okay oh okay Larry oh hey Larry mm. <laughs> kind of thing so for me it was like that. I'm going to bed yeah exactly <laughs> and then it's like and then she looks at Larry she's like hmm. and I'm like girl just just go just go. Um, we uh, we get the introduction uh, introduction to Kirsty. Um, Kirsty, I I like her. I just gonna say at, at uh, right now, it's like a lot of the characters actually just annoy me. I did not really find <laughs> other than the Cenobites. I did not find anyone likable. Likable. She was except I can talk. She was tolerable for me. She was tolerable because like you know she's still doing her thing. You know she yeah. but at the same time it's like I get it. Uh, you know you don't want to like you know. You have a like, crazy ass stepmom that like you know totally. You can she you, she knows uh, like Julia resents her. She knows, and that's like you know. And then she's trying to stay out of the way. I get that, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's just like oh, okay, you know. And the dad's trying to force a relationship. I'm like Larry, stop. No, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm like ain't gonna happen. Um, but yeah, so uh, she's like uh, she's tolerable. And then like you know, you meet the guy that she like you know has a relationship with, and he's just like putting his cigarette in his mouth and like pulling it out and like, he, yeah like, that keeps on... <laughs> that that back and forth and but, but i can't why does that actor's face look so damn familiar i can't find him in the credits at all like i, he I has... think yeah i think he's on, on credit at grand credit because i believe they changed the actor for the second movie ah gotcha i gotcha um... so, sorry to interrupt you yeah, yeah. i'm sorry no, just if, if i remember that, that i could be scene. i could be wrong i don't i don't remember for yeah, sure no but... worries but yeah, yeah so I... for me this one it starts to lull especially with the whole julia thing it got too julia centric which i didn't like her in the beginning anyways and i'm just like <laughs> can we move on like i don't <laughs> want to see her sexy escapades with frank <laughs> but yeah Fair enough. I got you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, that's that, fantastic. Okay. So at this point then right here. So now we obviously we're at this point in which we know all the Cenobites, right? And mm-hmm. um, once again, Lonnie, we're at this point in which the Cenobites are introduced. We see mm-hmm. these, this, this affair going on, right? Um, and now we're introduced to Christy uh, in there with the, you know, the family dinner that they're having uh, with mm-hmm. a vague, awkward family, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. But uh, where uh, where do you stand in regards to the pacing, uh, the acting with the characters that were introduced at this time being? Um, and just the so, vibe of the film right now. So for me, um, I enjoy that kind of pacing. Like we get a build up, mm-hmm. we kind of slow down, kind of like work our way into the story a little bit, then we get a big build up, you know, second act type of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, and... Um, I can, I can, I can agree that uh, it's a little clunky. It is. I mean, part of what I love about this movie is just the overall lore and understanding that I have uh, for this film, as well as just a love for the actors, um, who are all, for the most part, first-time film actors, um, as well as Clyde Barker. This being his directorial debut. Yeah. Uh, one of one of the funny stories is uh, he wanted to make this film, and he. Uh, the day that they were shooting, he went to the library to find a book on directing <laughs> and it was checked out at the time. So he just winged it from there. Um, he had directed <laughs> stage before and things like that. Like he had, he had done plays and things like that, but uh, he had never directed a movie before. And the, the last two films that were based off of his stuff, he just thought were travesties. You know, he had a very Alan Moore look to to things that were made after his books. There was, uh, I believe it was Rawhead Rex, and there was one other one. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but Rawhead Rex, as much as I'm a Clyde Barker fan, that movie's terrible. Um, <laughs> but um, I think I think uh, even editing wise, like they, they, they put together uh, a pretty solid film based off of what, what he had. Um, He's always talked about uh, 
there being more that could be done with this film um which is par- partially why i'm excited that he's attached to the to the new stuff coming out but um i think you get a really good uh, a good idea of uh julia in this with uh, the levels the levels that she's willing to go for her depravity which is kind of the basis of the story uh what levels frank went to for his levels of depravity uh what julia is willing to do for his her levels of uh depravity uh going into the to the sense of of killing men just so frank can uh restructure himself um personally going back to it actually in in the attic there um the scene where frank first reforms um, like the the goop and the bones coming out and just like yeah. everything forming together is probably one of my top like favorite special effects moments. Um, it's up there with like uh, the transformation scene in American Werewolf in London. Like it's yeah. just it's very. Uh, I think uh, our friend Kaylin, who's a a makeup artist, um, she I think she explained the process to me. It was actually like a like a melting process. It was done in reverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, say, it was like, yeah. Too. yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, everything everything was done in reverse. So it's like they had this structure and they kind of like melted it and then you know basically did it in reverse and you get to see it all like form again. Which I think made it as extra goopy as it was too, because it, once it started to like break apart, it was almost like the face melting off and uh in uh, Indiana Jones, yeah, like, it oh almost God. just looks like yeah. wand- wax came, wax coming off of his face. Uh, but I just I love that effect. It's one that always sticks with me. It's just like I can't wait for that moment to come because I'm like, ooh, I love this goopy part. It's coming up. Um, but I think yeah, you get you get this you get this idea from Julia, who's already kind of just introduced herself as the evil stepmother. She's a terrible person. Y'all already hate her, um, and you're getting more to hate her for. Um, and at the same time, you start to hate Larry because he's he's so craven. He's just he's this weak guy that you can tell that Julia doesn't want to be with. Um, it's why she cheated on him. Um, and now she wants to go beyond that. She wants to get away from Larry. She wants Frank back so they can figure out a way to be with each other. Um, and. Yeah, you just kind of, and with uh, with Christy as well, you get that capriciousness. You get that young college girl fresh out of the house, like, oh, dad, you know, I'm on my own. I want to do my thing. You know, yeah. I'm, I met this boy at our party and now I'm going to start sleeping with him. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, just. She got a hotel normal, by herself. <laughs> yeah, this, 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 this normal pretty guy who just happened to be there for some reason, uh, who eats cigarettes, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you just see, like, she makes bad decisions, too. She's a young kid. She's, she's making these stupid decisions. She finds this little box, and she takes it back with her and just starts playing with it for, for yeah. no reason. You know? So, yeah, it's I, I, I find it very interesting, even though I can agree uh, with a lot of people who have maybe seen it later or, or have a different idea of, like, film and things like that. It's, it, it, I can see that kind of second act and that, that, that little portion there in the middle to be a little bit slower until you get the action when it comes to the Cenobites appearing and, you know, chasing after Christy and, and, and the deal that they make and all that. No, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Also, Can I just say that yeah. um, I disagree with the whole, Larry, like disliking her Larry. I actually started like, you know, liking Larry this part. Cause like you can tell he's trying, but at the same time, he's just reflecting the energy that Julie is giving him, but he's still trying as a husband. That's now, for now me. do you like Larry or do you feel bad for Larry? See, I, actually like him because i'm like he's actually being a decent dad oh yeah absolutely like, yeah, he's, um, he's trying to be a good dad you just yeah. th- See, that's yeah. fascinating that's fascinating you both have that opinion though because i had two alternate opinions when i first saw this initially when i first saw the film i thought that um and and we're looking at here forgive us audience here we're about 15 minutes in this as well so we might speed a little through this but just to condense this and make sure we're on track still as well it's funny you bring larry in this position when i first saw this film i was so distracted by the blood and gore that i got distracted by larry's transformation at the end and Frank and how in, in which what he came in. And I thought that Andrew Robinson was such a fantastic actor oh, yeah. that I then started hating him because I forgot that that's that. Yeah, he's acting. That's not he's not being he's literally be wearing him. Larry mask. Exactly. Yes. And so at this, it's, it's one of those things where and, and, and forget the audience is you know, speeding up this point. This just uh, to keep this little track. 
So um, mentioning the fact that Christy brings up the box because she always mentions that she's at a different hotel room. She has a different vibe. She doesn't like the apart, uh, doesn't like the house, let alone uh, obviously not liking Linda because uh, Julia, I'm sorry, Julia here, um, because we're in a situation they're obviously having an affair. Looks like Frank's and Larry's family is somehow not exactly the greatest. They make references to the mother of the old lady, so she passes away in general. Looks mm -hmm. like Frank has already had these relationships with, with, um, with Julia at this point because uh, Yaya, you mentioned the pictures. A previous as well, Lonnie, you mentioned the actual just, you know, both of you mentioned, uh, you know, her constipated looks on her face and the dislike of having the yeah. classic stepmother vibe. Um, at this point, we understand that uh, all of a sudden that um, she kills not only one, two, but three. You mentioned this, Lonnie, before uh, to go to the extent of people to reformat Frank and who he is. We start mm -hmm. to realize that Frank doesn't really is starting to care less and less about, let's say, you know, Julia per se, and more like the bodies of getting him in there and so forth as well. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, we know that Christy gets a hint of what's going on. Uh, you know, fast forward a little bit, plays with the box, as both of you mentioned, like, what the hell are you doing? Opens the world <laughs> into this whole area, talks to Pinhead, the head honcho himself, deep throat, butterball, and the chatter. Uh, evidently, there's the engineer. I can't believe I forgot the engineer. I'm totally sorry about that. Uh, yeah. But you have the, the engineer. The weird worm is, guy. Yeah, Chase, and that's yeah. a crazy thing because that big worm guy evidently was made that way, not like he was in the comics. He was actually supposed to be another Cenobite, which oh, yeah. is yeah, they don't yeah. really mention. It's a whole thing. Yeah, so you got these references and so forth as well. Now, the only reason why I'm you know speeding a little bit forward this year, you're dealing with we were dealing with excellent special effects. Um, I understand that the pacing slowed down a little bit. We get the great appearances to which. I understand that behind the scenes, we're looking at a $1 million budget and they had altered lines back and forth to people and they were very limited. In fact, I believe Clyde Barker even mentioned, uh, Lonnie, you mentioned this before and Yaya, you definitely mentioned this. Um, so in regards to Clyde Barker's introduction, technically this was his second, third third film he's worked on, but first one he's been in charge of <laughs> and actually to come out with. Um, the crazy thing about this though is he said the whole cast that was with him was probably the most amazing cast he's worked with in a long time because he said specifically that they knew he had no idea what he was doing and they were willing to still work with him. He and they all worked told, with him, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He told his DP, his director of photography, that he had no idea the difference between a 25, mil 25 millimeter lens and a 35 millimeter lens. He had no problem yeah. with admitting that. So at this point, it seems that this is like borderline cult classic, you know, where this is coming and how this is going. Um, we finally get hints of renditions of what the world looks like or where the Cenobites are from. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, classic darkness, the chain scenes of having those suckers come back at you, scare the shit out of me constantly, just seeing <laughs> those things at that point. Oh, yeah, Lord. <laughs> um, don't mean to spend it fast on this point. We understand that three bodies, uh, three bodies essentially killed, which also gets me to think, that Julie has been a little shady in the first place because all three of these dudes hint that they wanted to mess with her in the first place and they're all from mm -hmm. her workplace. And she's like, oh, and one dude even mentions, he's like, hey, you've denied all my advances before. Why now? And I'm like, what the frick? So, I mean, I, I, Lonnie, you, you mentioned- So I can Yaya, put this hammer to the back of your head. I, exactly. And Yaya, you brought, to, you brought this up. She just has a really shady freaking past. And it, yeah. it's just like- I, it, it just starts coming full fledged, bam, 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 bam. So to me, I'm like, oh my, she's finally gonna get it. She's gonna get it somehow, whatever the case. Let's fast forward this here. Uh, we're finally at this point towards the end. The end where the initial, like right now, Larry is still clueless. He goes mm -hmm. and responds to Julia's phone call. Of, you need to see this. You need to see what's going on. It's implemented that something happens <clears throat> to Larry. Done. And yeah. he has, as you said, Lonnie, the the Larry face mask. Um, well, and you you see it you see it in there. A uh, part of a uh, part of the conversation that happens between Julia and Frank is Frank convinces Julia, "I want Larry's skin. It's mm -hmm. the last it's the last piece that I need for my transformation. I want you to bring him to me. I'm gonna take it. Then we'll be then we can be happy together." Exactly. Um, so that's and, what that's yeah. what leads to her doing the, the phone yeah. call and everything. And then yeah. it's implied. You don't really see it. It's just implied. Exactly. All of a sudden. Yeah, Larry, exactly. Larry's and back and he's got all the blood around his like, the, yeah, the yeah. goop and shit. And exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, I think it's a really point. cool, like, subtle makeup thing. It was, it was like you could kind of tell, like, some like parts were like peeling mm -hmm. and like a little bit, like, you could tell something's not quite right, but yeah, so, like one of these things don't belong here. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like with Larry, that was like, in a way, like Julia's like final redemption. If she didn't do this, like, at least like thing, but she decided to do it, it was like her final, like like point of no return kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Which exactly. Because really in the beginning, she was like, no, don't, please, I can't stand it while they were on the phone. And yeah. then, like, he, she had to be convinced, but, you know, Julia being the sussy bee, she is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, no. that's like going back to what I was talking about is, is we were seeing kind of the the information of Julia's own depravity. Yeah. yeah. But the lengths that she was willing to go to. Uh, I, I think it was funny. Uh, there, was, there was a quote uh, from the uh, from the people on set that the the working title of this movie was the things a woman would do for a good fuck. Yes, that was that was the fourth that was the fourth suggestion yeah. uh, by the actual sixty four year old uh, PA woman that was yeah. with them on set suggested that <laughs> that title. That was yeah. hilarious. I, I, that is that is freaking hilarious. Oh my which, god! Which is funny because that's basically what it is. Is huh? what, what exactly. Julia and- would be willing to do to have her fuckboy back. And on that note, and like we're running a little bit on that on note, here we are at this point, right? We see this. And to me, I will say that this is the first film that I saw that actually painted a female that could just be as wicked as a male. Because every film that I've seen has been like a uh, male adultery. Women wasn't yeah. treat me life. I went somewhere and it's like, you know, like la femme fatale in a sense, right? And then now yep. we have this situation here in which it's actually the woman, a working woman's not getting her needs what she wants. Do I agree exactly what's going on with her? No, but it was interesting how yep. they uh, showed that, hey, females can do- Yeah, they kind of flipped as... that script a little bit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, on that but, perfect, yeah, but perfect. that was, again, the reason why, like, you know, she was supposed to be the big bad. Like what you said at the beginning, why wasn't Pinhead, like, you know, uh, acknowledged more? Because he wasn't supposed to be the bad guy. He's, if anything, he's neutral. He's very know, yeah. neutral. Which I have had this. I have had this conversation many, many times, and uh-huh. uh, I've started online arguments about this Ooh. about whether the Cenobites are true neutral or neutral evil. Well, oh. that's funny though, because one line in there, and they they keep on that debate is there for a very long time. Uh, in fact, mm-hmm. the line was put in there. Two lines. One being the fact where he says. We are angels to some and demons to others, others, or demons to others, mm-hmm. angels to some. That line is partially altered from the comp or the book itself that Clyde Barker <laughs> wrote. And then also, because um, I do know the original title for this was supposed to be uh, Hellborn Heart, but eventually they were like, or Tales of Hellborn Heart. And they were like, wait a minute, it sounds too much romanticized. It sounds too much like a love novel, switch it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, why we have this time. So at this point, I want to ask both of you guys this year. At this point, we know that, uh, like fast forward, because I know we've been hopping back and forth. Mm-hmm. Christy makes a, an agreement with the Cenobites saying the fact that if they can go ahead and um, go ahead and not take her, she can show where Uncle Frank is and they can go find him, so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. She has a hint that something happened to her father. So she goes to see, you know, for, you know, the Larry mask and so God forth. Damn. She understands what's going on with Julia. Julia at this point has the situation to have her fate. We see, you know, uh, Frank actually eventually kill her with the nice little blade butterfly knife still mm-hmm. sticker thing there and then sucks to her life and does his own thing, which we've kind of hinted that was going to happen. So my question for both of you, and we're going to start off with you, Yaya. In regards to justice, in regards to an ending, in regards to a pacing, at this point, where do you stand with Hellraiser? Okay, so I felt like justice-wise, it wasn't like, no, I think Julia did needed a worse demise than anything um i guess the fact that like her being betrayed by her lover is supposed to be seen as like a, oh my god but as you know i'm like no girl like you needed to be tortured like i wish she was taken <laughs> out by the cenobites instead because that would have been like at least like a thing but no or at least getting to-, to see the flaying that she got because you see her right? like the, the the remnants of her in bed where her chest is open yeah. and her face is all peeled off exactly. i wish we could have had the budget to see that because exactly. oh yeah the chain that, she, uh, that was that was yeah. gnarly good point <laughs> so like yeah. yeah i wish like more could have been done um and i guess like i just felt like eh. um pacing was now this ending is pacing really interesting because it kind of slows down and it pick, it's very it's still like tense because you have like you know uh frank larry chasing after like you know thing after kirsty and really implying that like you know oh, julia's gone we can be together kind of thing yeah. while i'm wearing your daddy's face <laughs> yeah. um because frank is gross frank is gross <laughs> we haven't Listen established one. that yet frank is gross, <laughs> gross. exactly so that's like a whole thing i liked it and then it suddenly picks up because suddenly the Cenobites come in and you're, she, they're trying to escape the house and she's like closing the box. She's going pew, pew, pew with like the little box. And like, I thought it was really interesting and I thought it was really weird for it to like lull and it pick up again 
towards the end of the movie. And then I actually enjoyed the pacing towards the end because I'm less like, thank you. By the same time I was like, God, I wish Julia could have died like much, much worse. I wish <laughs> Frank could have died much, yeah. much worse. He was just like pulled apart and he was like, Jesus wept. And, it, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Which I, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really funny. Like, I think the statistic is like, I think Pinhead and the Cenobites have eight and a half minutes worth of screen yes. time in this whole movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think in that eight and a half minutes, it informed their entire characters of who they were. You get some of my favorite lines from the entire series are in that. You get the uh, uh, demons to some, angels to others line. Uh, you get my favorite line, uh, which is uh, no tears, please. It's a waste yes. of good suffering. Yes. Like you hear that line and he's just so stoic about it. You're like, ooh, okay. <laughs> could, yeah, this this guy, this guy's into it. All right. Now on that point, Lonnie, quick question for you, because uh, since Yaya said the the pacing for her and sped up, and and this um how in regards to the storyline seemed to like very little of piercing moments here, 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 here. Mm-hmm. So at this point, we got her acting, we got the justice. Uh, did Julie get her deserve? Same thing with Frank. Where in regards are you to the ending? What was your opinion in the last remaining time that they had? Um, uh, so I I will go without skewing my knowledge of 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 Hellraiser. Um, I think they ended it in a way that if we were to see it today um it's an ending in a way that leaves it open for sequels Mm -hmm. um there's more to be told there's more to happen um uh, the story itself we know now uh clive had uh, a trilogy uh originally that he wanted to do and there is a trilogy he was in charge of the trilogy uh unfortunately hellraiser 3 is a film that is kind of panned amongst most of the fans i want to do a revisiting of that film having watched it recently i think we should go back and kind of give that film a little bit more peace um i love the second film too the second mm. film's a great kind of finishing of christie's yes. story which I think is, is really good. Um, even though you get her later on in a sequel that shall not be named. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think, yeah, you get this, like you, you get like this kind of rapid paced, okay, this thing is happening, but I, in my opinion, you, you get the feeling of um, the Cenobites are, are speeding this up. They want to get to Frank once they get Frank back, now it's like, okay, well, we're still here. What else can we get? And that's what leads into the them chasing after Christy and her having to close the box and everything. Um, which I think is important because it kind of inf- informs uh, to to these guys are just like, look, we got what we originally had. Now we want something new. Let's play with this girl. And, yeah, totally. and it, it, it informs to like, these guys, these guys are gross. <laughs> these, these guys these guys want to I, and it's they want to cause pain but as they described it's reaching the new levels of experience so to them it's not even about pain it's not about being evil it's not about you know being gross it's literally like we're going to show this girl a, a whole new world a whole new world <laughs> um Wrong movie from when I originally saw this, but still. Let us take um, your eyes. I mean, what? <laughs> Let us take your eyes. Um, but no, I think it. I think it. I think it just really informs to that character that makes you kind of want more at the end of the movie. You just get it gets stopped, and you're like, "Well, now this whole world's opened up. I want to see more of this. I want to see where this goes." Like it is, is Christy done? It like, are we ever going to see her again? Um, the, the, the vagrant turns into a bone dragon and flies off. It's just, just, I think a weirdly yeah. placed moment in the movie, even as a fan of the movie, mm-hmm. I think it's a weirdly yeah, you placed know, moment. Yeah. Bone dragon, but, cricket eating, you know, kind of vagrant. It's yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I I love the end of this film. I, I I think I think it finishes off where it needs to to pick up into the next film, mm. which we got the consecutive right. films. But like yes. again, like if this was an MCU type of thing, it was mm. like we're waiting for the next thing to happen. Great. 
No, totally. Totally. That, excellent. Excellent. Uh, I just want to double check on comments here before I get my last opinion here. And also want to ask you guys where we can find you on your socials as well before we uh, come to the ending of this show here. Um, Q Ball mentions before a good movie is like a good song. It starts with a good intro riff and then a solid rhythm parts, then drops mm. down to the pre chorus and it hit hard with a badass chorus and breakdown bridge to build up to a guitar solo and etc. That's what a good screenplay writer or good songwriter does. Uh, Tin said, well said, Q Ball, I completely agree, along with our non talk family, completely agree as well. Q Ball, in that regard, um, that's very interesting, Q, bringing that up because that did seem like an emotional roller coaster with when it came to yes. Hellraiser. I will say that my initial opinion of this film was kind of skewed by the amount of blood and gore in it. And it was interesting because I really got distracted from the storyline for a brief moment. Uh, but at being able to watch it over and over again, um, allowing to actually go ahead and get, you know, see the um actually experiencing some or not me you know, i'm sorry not experiencing some of the behind the scenes stuff but actually reading about it and learning about it much later kind of makes some of these things that i disagreed with oh that makes sense why you did it oh your mm -hmm. budget or this is what you did before as well now yeah on that note um uh in regards to guys ratings um are you guys going to keep the ratings currently where they are or are they going to go up or down yeah yeah I think mine is still staying um, because as a film, like it still wasn't one of my favorites. The universe, yes, especially the comic books. I love uh -huh. the comic books, um, but as the as for just the film, yeah, no, I I probably will not watch. It hey, there's nothing wrong with standing yeah. your ground. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. No, <laughs> just, that, yeah. that's what we love this show though, because like <laughs> we have everybody that's again willing to pit. Fantastic, um, Alani yourself, does it uh, stay or could you give it higher? Yeah, it stays. It's 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 absolutely still uh, just top tier for right me, on. and it always will be. Um, uh, having watched the first one today, I like probably when we're done with this, I'll watch the second one again, just because I, I love it so much. Yeah, Heck the second yeah. one, I Heck I do yeah. agree. Second one is better. Yes. I would give five and a half to six. For the I would get a five, four and a half to a five yeah. for the second one. Not yeah. right on. But See, now I'm going to blame both th of you. I'm going to blame think, both of you here. Go on, sorry, Lana Gunn. I think it's one of those that uh, it's it's the completion of of the story. Like Star mm -hmm. Wars by itself is just Star Wars, but you add in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, it just makes it so much better yes that's a very valid point i will have to check these out too because like that's the thing for me itself i'm going to have to go ahead and put this possibly borderline 3.5 to 4 i'm edging the reason why is just be, uh just hearing points that i've you know seen before i know there's a lot of points we haven't brought up in regards to prosthetics uh, what they worked with uh the actors in general what they had to deal with some of the actors not being able to you know articulate the words and let let alone be able to see uh some <laughs> injuries on set the budgets you know going over budget mm. and so forth but surprisingly yeah. with a film coming out with 20 mil after its initial release it makes it a big fan fiction um but this is the all this is all the time that we have today guys thank you for joining us as usual and so forth as well i want to say thank you for lonnie thank you to yaya you guys are amazing I, i'm so happy to have you guys on the show dealing with us in general with all your information just being great guests uh before we leave today uh lonnie um where can we find you on your socials my friend um best socials probably for uh for all of my kind of like prop work and and some of the things that i do uh would be on Instagram and it's at the underscore Sith underscore abides. Uh, so the Sith abides. Heck yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, my friend, where can we find you? Find me a lot of places, but mostly you can find me on YouTube at J Palace Yeah Yeah, where I upload every other week. I actually just uploaded a video today for the Mid Autumn Moon Festival, which is this Saturday. Um, but you can also find me on Twitch at my Hamachi, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So tomorrow. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I, if I can interject and say one more thing before yeah. we go, um, if, if we ever get the chance, I want Yaya and me to talk about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ooh. Both the original that, and the remake? I do uh, like the remake a lot, but the original. I'm going to join sure, in this trio, my friend, because that, that film I watched when I first moved to Fort Hood, Texas. And oh my God, I got some stuff that I was. So um, <laughs> let's go ahead and just put out the universe, us three. Let's go ahead and talk about Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love that as well. Yes. Uh, before we go, I said uh, you can find me at I A N C O W I E. It's I am Cowie on Instagram, where I have my acting, uh, comedy, uh, POV skits, you name it, have fun with it. Uh, Twitter at Crimson Cowie where I talk all my trash all the time. Uh, I complain about the world and all first world problems or at Facebook at Alejandro Cowie as well. Well, folks, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, please make sure to tune in for our next show, which is going to be later this uh, month on the 15th. What? Monday. Just kidding. Um, it's going to be on Monday. Please, please. What are we covering?
Rings of Power. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the oh, yeah. wrong screen here. So right. I apologize, guys. Please do not forget Rings of Power. Once again, friends, ladies and gentlemen, witches, wizards, thank you so much for joining us today. And you guys have a lovely day. Come back to check us next time. Bye. Bye, guys.